This tutorial is all about cleaning, either with detergents or with solvents other than water, which is called dry cleaning. Nowadays on many detergent adverts, they say that you should be washing at lower temperatures, but what are the advantages of washing at lower temperatures? Detergent companies like this one, Procter & Gamble, are always striving to make detergents work at lower and lower temperatures. This one, Aerial XL Gel, has said to be working well at 15 degrees. Cleaning at low temperatures ensure that you meet your everyday cleaning challenges, it says. But also environmental challenges, and what does it mean by that? Of course, washing at 15 degrees will save energy because it means that you'll be washing your clothes at the temperature of your cold water tap, roughly. But the other advantage is that many more fabrics could be washed at 15 degrees than could be washed at, say, 40 or 60 degrees. Wool, for example, requires cool washing, as does silk. Otherwise, these materials will shrink. The next part of the specification ensures that you know how detergents work. Detergents are very clever molecules in that they have two ends to the molecule which do different tasks in the washing process. We've come across this concept before when we've looked at emulsifying molecules. Both soaps and detergents have similar molecules in that they have a hydrophobic tail and a hydrophilic head. Hydrophilic means that it will make strong attractions to water. Hydrophobic means it will make strong attractions to fats and oils. Detergent molecules are long chain alkane molecules with a charged end. It actually has a kind of sulfate end to it, which has got a negative charge. Therefore, it attracts water molecules towards this charged or hydrophilic end. The water molecules cluster around the molecule and therefore make it soluble. They make strong attractions. Let's imagine that we have a fatty or oily stain on our cloth and we're washing it in the detergent solution. The fatty or oily stain attracts the hydrophobic ends of the detergent molecules which then make strong attractions to the fat or oil. Strong enough to overcome the attractions that the fat or oil has to the fabric molecules. If enough of these detergent molecules are able to make these strong attractions to the fat or oil, it will lift that fat or oil stain off the fibres of the fabric and take it into solution. Remember, it's the hydrophobic end of the molecule making attractions to the oil, but now the oil is completely surrounded by detergent molecules. And the outside of the oil stain is all the hydrophilic ends of the molecule, which of course can make strong attractions with the water and can therefore dissolve. So summarising, the detergent works well because the hydrophobic ends of the detergent molecule form strong intermolecular forces with molecules of oil or fat in the stain, and the hydrophilic end of the detergent forms strong intermolecular forces with the water molecules. An examination question may ask you to interpret data in the form of a table and to say something about the effectiveness of a washing powder, washing liquid or a detergent liquid, for example, for dishwashing. And it may ask you to compare the effectiveness, for example, of two washing powders, one which might contain only a detergent and the other one which may contain also an enzyme. There's two types of washing detergent that you can buy. One is non-biological. Non-biological contains only the detergent 
and therefore it works better at high temperatures because the detergent molecules can move faster and have more collisions at higher temperatures. The other kind is biological uh, washing liquid or detergent and this contains both detergent and enzymes and the enzymes are included in order to digest any fatty stains. Now these work best at lower temperatures around 40 degrees because the enzymes work best at that temperature and in fact if you use these biological uh, washing liquids at higher temperatures like uh, 60 or 80 that would actually denature the enzymes so you'd be left with just the action of the detergent itself. The exam specification says you need to be able to interpret data on the effectiveness of detergents. So here's a past paper question. Stowe Market Synthetics make a washing up liquid. The washing up liquid is used to clean dirty plates. Rachel and James work for Stowe Market Synthetics. They want to investigate the cleaning power of the washing up liquid at different temperatures. So to make the investigation fair, they're using one cubic centimetre of washing up liquid, a thousand cubic centimetres of water and identical dirty plates. Look at the table, it shows the results of their investigation. And there's uh, three columns, one of temperature of water in degrees Celsius as it rises as you go down the table. The number of dirty plates that could be cleaned, which seems to again rise as you go down the table. And the height of foam produced in centimetres, which seems to be about the same as you go down the table. Rachel and James make two conclusions from the table of results. Write about two conclusions that Rachel and James can make. Well, the first is that this last column, the height of the foam produced in centimetres, does not change as the temperature changes. So we might say, as the temperature increases, the height of foam does not change. The second thing that we notice is that the number of dirty plates that could be cleaned does increase as we increase the temperature of the water. So we'll state this as our second conclusion. As the temperature increases the number of plates that can be cleaned increases. One of the ingredients in the washing up liquid is a detergent. Write about how the detergent helps to remove fat and grease from dirty plates. Use ideas about the chemical structure of a detergent molecule and intermolecular forces. A label diagram may help you to answer this question. Well, we start by drawing a detergent molecule. And we probably label this end here the hydrophobic end. And this end here, the hydrophilic end. We then say that the detergents hydrophilic end make strong attractions to water molecules. Full stop. The hydrophobic end makes strong attractions to the fat or grease molecules. This helps the grease be removed into the water.
We now move on to dry cleaning, which of course is not dry at all. It involves using a solvent, but that solvent just isn't water. At high level, we need to be able to explain how dry cleaning works by talking again about the intermolecular forces that occur, both between the uh, molecules of the solvent and also between the molecules of the grease in the stain. When you take clothes to the dry cleaners, it's because they have a stain on them that won't wash out. And that's because the stain is an oily or a greasy stain. The stain itself won't dissolve in water and won't be acted upon by the enzymes in detergents. And so we have to try a different method, which involves trying to dissolve that stain in a different solvent, which isn't water. The hope is that although that grease stain doesn't dissolve in water, it will dissolve in a different solvent that isn't water. These are usually based upon hydrocarbons with chlorines attached. The theory we're going to look at here is very similar to the theory we learnt in an earlier module when we learnt about nail varnish and why nail varnish dissolves in nail varnish remover but doesn't dissolve in water. Well, there's weak intermolecular forces between the molecules of grease and there's also weak intermolecular forces between the solvent molecules and these are about the same strength as each other. And therefore, the solvent molecules can form intermolecular forces with the molecules of grease which are about as strong as those which the grease had with other grease molecules and about as strong as those that the solvent molecules had with other solvent molecules. So the solvent molecules can surround the molecules of grease. Grease can't dissolve in water because water molecules make very strong attractions with other water molecules. The weak attractions that the water molecules can make with the grease aren't strong enough to overcome those that already exist between the water molecules. So, dry cleaning. Essentially, dry cleaning uh, is done in a machine that's very much like your washing machine at home. In that, you put the clothes in the machine and the machine then fills up with a dry cleaning solvent from a tank rather than water from the mains. The clothes are then agitated and washed in the washing machine and the stains will dissolve in the dry cleaning solvent. You then spin the clothes to remove the dirty solvent, but instead of that going down the uh, drains, it's collected. and then it's purified by warming up that solvent to evaporate it, which leaves the dirt behind, and then condensing the solvent elsewhere to get clean solvent again, which can then be reused. It's too valuable to throw away, and it wouldn't be much good going down the drains anyway. The clothes, which are then just dampened, I guess, by the solvent, are left in a ventilated place to dry. have to be left in a very ventilated place because the vapours... Um, are quite poisonous and uh, therefore not good to be uh, in an enclosed space.